Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, I'm Mary Ann Reed, and welcome to Postscript. I'm sitting here talking to Pastor Ken Warline, who just finished the third sermon in the series, Jesus, the Prequel. And I have three questions for you, so thanks for being here. Sure. The first question is, in the sermon, you said that Jesus is the new temple. She writes, I had always heard that we, as Christians, were a temple. What does that mean? Yeah, right. And so what the questioner is asking about are those verses uh, like in Corinthians that say, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Um, collectively and individually, we now, our bodies, are the temple of the Holy Spirit that he's living in and working through, which is absolutely correct. And I actually thought about working that into the message, but a message can only have so many symbols before it just gets muddy and confusing. Mm -hmm. So we were talking about the temple and how the, 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 J Jesus is saying, uh, you're looking for something that's better than the temple, here I am. Um, we also talked about how he's the, the final high priest, he's the final sacrifice. And after all of these th things converged in Jesus, I started thinking, you know what, this is just going to get too confusing if, if, if then I go on and say, and now you are the temple of the Holy Spirit and, and, and all. So that would just have to be in the sequel if we had a sequel to the, to the prequel yeah. <laughs> series. Okay. Sorry. Thanks. Yeah. Um, the second question, next question, if Jewish people do not believe Jesus was our last sacrifice, why do they today still not put forth sacrifices to approach God? Sure. And, and that's a good question. Um, th I think it, it really all comes down to the, the fact that after 70 AD, uh, you have, they, they don't have a temple anymore. And it was at that point that the traditions of Judaism became more important and they started putting all of their energy into the Mish Mishnah, Mishnah um, and these traditions that they were passing uh, down uh, sort of telling uh, the stories and, but the sacrificial system, uh, the sacrificing of the animals and all kind of fell out when there was no temple anymore to do it in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the last question in Hebrews, it talks about those before Jesus being saved by faith. What does that mean given that they lived before Jesus came on our behalf? Sure. Right. And you got the great hall of fame uh, there chapter in, in Hebrews that talks about all these great Old Testament characters. And that's a great question. So they didn't have Jesus to trust in for their salvation. So did they go to hell? Well, no, clearly not. Hebrews tells us uh, quite clearly to the contrary. So what was it that they were trusting in? Well, they were trusting in as much of God as he had revealed himself uh, to them. They didn't have the fullest and the final revelation of God, which would come through Jesus. But they were trusting in him as much as he'd revealed himself. And so and it began with Abraham. You go back to Genesis 15, and God says to then Abram, that was his name first, says, now I want you to get him, you're going to move. And he says, so where am I going to move? Well, I'll just tell you. Just get on the road. Here we go. And he began uh, to move and, of course, would actually move over to the, the land that now is referred to as the Holy Land. And that's where the Jewish people would begin to uh, multiply. And then they'd go to Egypt for a few hundred years and that whole story. And then they'd come back through Moses and everything. But what did they say, what does it say in Genesis 15 that was uh, the redeeming quality in Abraham's life, his faith? It was credited to him as righteousness. What was his faith? He followed as much of God as God had revealed himself uh, to man 
at that point, as did all of these other Old Testament characters. Then we move into the New Testament and we have even a fuller, final uh, revelation. Oh, and Jesus says, now you've been wondering, what does he look like? I and the Father are one. Mm -hmm. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So it makes it easier. So we who, who come after Jesus uh, uh, really have an easier time of it than perhaps the people in the Old Testament times did. Well, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pastor Ken. And thank you for watching Postscript. Be sure and come back next week. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.